My name's Christian, um, I'm 18. I'm a fashion designer from Perth and I'm the owner and founder of Amore Clothing. I think the main thing that sticks out from my brand compared to the rest is just my ethics behind it and, and the morals, the reason why I started it, the actual drive behind the brand itself and my actual end goal. It's not just a, a box logo, t-shirt, clothing brand. There's a lot of things that I haven't done yet that I want to achieve with the brand. Um, many different avenues, not also just being a fashion designer, but being more of an architect and an artist and bringing the brand to its like full potential. I don't want to limit myself to, to just clothing specifically. The way it started and the interest was all quite literally by accident. I would have been like 15. Uh, we walked past a couple of the shops in the city and um, yeah, it just kind of hit me like, uh, how good would it be to start a clothing brand? And um, you know, that was one of the impulse thoughts that I'm sure a lot of people get. But um, yeah, I saw something in it that I don't think I'd ever would have seen. And I, I sat on it, I thought about it, and I thought, uh, let's give this a shot. And the way that my life panned out over the Christmas of 2019, beginning of 2020, really just, I feel like it happened for a reason. And that's why the brand is, is where it's at today. I had the idea of starting it uh, probably mid to end of December, but then the actual brand was like founded when we went into full effect on the 15th of January at the beginning of 2020. Uh, Amore in a lot of European languages means love. And the whole reason why I started the brand was because of a teenage breakup. Yeah, I utilize the brand as a way to express myself. I, I couldn't have thought of a better name. I do take heavy inspiration from Virgil Abloh. He recently passed away. And as a designer, he got a lot of positive, a lot of negative feedback, criticism. But as far as his morals and the way he saw design, art and fashion, the way he saw life in general has probably hit me the hardest out of any other designer or public figure. I couldn't tell you the amount of times I was sat in my office, in my room or in bed, just listening to two, three, four hour podcasts and interviews and just listening to that man speak. I mean, his outlook on life and and fashion and art as a whole was, it, no one had the same vision as him. Everything starts with an idea, whether it be a sweatshirt, t-shirt, collection, Instagram post. I effectively grabbed that idea and just turn it into reality. I don't really sit too long. Uh, how is it gonna do this way and that way? If I have an idea for a t-shirt with a large back graphic, I kind of instantly already know what colors will work well, what color textile fabric, what color the ink will be, how it's going to look. And yeah, I just grab the idea and, and run with it. I turn it into a physical product. I won't release something that's pointless. I won't, you know, I won't just kind of half-ass anything. Whatever ideas come to me, it's because of the situation I'm in, the time period I'm in, I feel like all that kind of works relevant. You know, I won't spend too long sitting at a desk trying to find out or figure out ideas or, or designs you know it's more of an impulse thing and whatever feels right at that point in time you know i'll, I'll run with it the 400 boys are they're they're on another level they've got a lot of stuff coming up soon and watch the space but um as far as how we started working i believe i knew of banjo through football um He's, he played like a week of preseason in the same team as me a couple of years ago. And uh, yeah, we've you know been following each other on Instagram and whatnot. And yeah, I saw he was an artist. Uh, I've discovered you know 400 Inc. As, as, a, as an entity. Hit up Banjo, I was like, man, let's do something. You know, we spent maybe a month or two coming up with, with the collaboration, coming up with the ideas. We thought long and hard about design ideas and um, yeah, the final product with the logo, Ghost Mac logo, it worked. Yeah, the actual space of 400 itself. Yeah, they're they're on they're on a good path, and watch the space with the boys. It's gonna be very good. The point I'm trying to get across is more of something I'm trying to prove. You know, I'm trying to prove that being you know a teenage boy from Perth doesn't execute the fact that you can't be an artist or make money from selling clothes. Perth in general is is a really difficult space to, to do the crazy things in, in the fashion and music industry, you know, compared to many other places like New York, Paris and you know and what have you. But um I think what I'm trying to 
achieve and get across is to create a platform for our young men, guys that are going through, through a bit of mental health struggles. I wanna offer them a platform where they can take inspiration and kind of make it their own, you know, using fashion itself as a way to express themselves and, and not leaving that kind of stuff bottled in. It's more of just building a platform, building a world for these, for these young men, especially in Perth. So the runways are very difficult. I mean, both of them, the first one and the second one, I did it all on my own. I was making the collections, gathering the models, sorting out the venues, decorating the venues, show notes, soundtrack, organizing photographers. Yeah, as a one man band, it is six months of hell. The first show, I was completely unaware of what it was. I knew what a runway was, obviously, but as far as the behind the scenes, the logistics, how you actually execute a runway start to finish, I had no idea. So I was just playing everything by ear, man. Um, learning as I went, you know, something went wrong, I learned. And yeah, the first show was, was nuts because I didn't think it could actually be pulled off. But diving into the second show, you know, I scaled it up by, by two, three times. I had three times the amount of models. The warehouse was three times bigger. It's three times the amount of people, three times the amount of expectations. And um, I knew what to do this time, but I still was just, you know, learning every, every single thing I did. It was something new that I learned. There was an obstacle I had to overcome, but yeah, it's, it's all it is is learning, especially in a situation like that. With the pop-up shop, that's, that's an event where it doesn't require as much setup as a runway and, and thinking and logistics as a show. As far as the pop-up shop, uh, we held our FA Concept in Watertown. You know, I spoke to Christian and Amrick, uh, the owners of FA Concept. Uh, I went to a couple of meetings and I said, look, this is what I want to do. Can we do this? And if so, how are we going to do it? Um, we sat, we talked about everything. Yes, it's not an easy situation. You're still running around doing a million things, but um, an event like a pop-up, it is, it's pretty straightforward. You know, your goal for the night is to sell, to mingle with customers, to get people that have only seen the brand online into store and actually feel, see your products firsthand. Yeah, it's, it's an event that's, that I will do again, that's for sure. The next 10 years, I'll be 28, Jesus. Uh, In the next 10 years from now up until I'm 30 is the years I wanna achieve all my goals. I wanna do them young. Um, it'd be a dream of mine to even have the opportunity of becoming an artistic director of any big fashion house. Um, I'm sure that's the go for any fashion designer. Ultimately, I wanna have New York Fashion Week ticked off, Milan ticked off, Paris ticked off, Tokyo done. I wanna try hit up every fashion week I possibly can. I want to incorporate a concept store, you know, even if it is a six month store that's in the heart of Perth City, so be it. I want to collaborate with a, with a couple of big name brands, dive into sportswear a little bit, kind of that retro vibe. But um, yeah, as far as 10 years, um, I couldn't tell you everything because there's a lot I want to achieve before I'm, before I'm 30. I think in the next 10 years, I want to, I want to be to where I want to be. And yeah, it's, it's very hard to explain where that is because I can't even see it yet.